My next guest, Dondre Whitfield, is an Emmy-nominated actor with a successful Hollywood career that spans decades from The Cosby Show to Queen Sugar. He's also an activist and an accomplished writer with his latest book, Male vs. Man, How to Honor Women, Teach Children and Elevate Men to Change the World, which examines what it means to be not just a man, but a role model and good father. He's also a dedicated husband and father. Dondre, my friend, thank you so much for joining me tonight. My friend and sister, you know, it's always a pleasure for me to be with you. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, first, happy Juneteenth to you. Uh, we know the significance of this holiday for us as a people. What does it mean for you personally? Happy Juneteenth to you, too. And, you know, the significance is that we finally get uh, our country, our country, to acknowledge the fact mm -hmm. that there was a wrong, that it should be, um, that it should not only be honored by commemorating it with a national holiday, but also what do we do now in order to resuscitate and restore our communities that otherwise would have been better off had we been treated the way human beings are supposed to be treated. Uh, other folks mm -hmm. have had the luxury of being able to come to this nation and have something in their hand when they came. Our people, our diaspora actually helped to build this country. In fact, through its enslaved labor, actually built this country and we walked away with nothing when we were emancipated. Now, yesterday, President Biden signed a bill into law making Juneteenth a federal holiday and there's been an ongoing debate since. Is this more symbolism? What is your take? Yeah, unfortunately, it begins to feel like that, right? So we put all this work into making sure that we have another administration, but at the same time, it feels like our folks are being served at a snail's pace. So we've seen other communities, uh, we've seen other uh, groups of people, and we don't disparage any of them for getting what they need in order for them to walk better mm -hmm. in our nation. But now we're asking, okay, the folks that actually built this country, through its labor. The folks who actually, and I would argue that our people, you know, we, we, we've been talking about this word patriotism. And I've been arguing for years that the biggest patriots in this country, in fact, are black people. Because despite the fact that we are marginalized, despite the fact that we are demonized, we still show up every single day to continue building this nation. So what about mm -hmm. us, Mr. President? What about us, Madam Vice President? Where are we? What's, what's, what's going on? You are, in fact, in office right now because of what black people have done to put you there, in particular, black women. And so now we say, now what? Now what? Well, how much of Juneteenth, Dondre, should be about celebration and how much should be about introspection and reflection? You know, I, you bring up some great points in terms of introspection and reflection. We, we should absolutely be uh, commemorating the, the, our folks that have uh, fertilized, their blood, in fact, has fertilized this soil. So we should actually be using Juneteenth the way we used Juneteenth before it became a national holiday, which is to say to our ancestors, thank you for everything that you've done to allow us to be in this position. And now with that being said, we are gonna continue, no pun intended, to bang the drum until our folks are walking as equal citizens in this nation. And that's going to come in a number of different ways. And let's not forget that you know, we need to figure out what does 40 acres, uh, 40 acres and a mule look like right now? When we didn't mm -hmm. have that, you know, we were looking at the fact that this is what people did in order to build generational wealth. And, you know, Dr. Uh, uh, Frederick Price said it years ago, you know, if this were a game of Monopoly, even everyone playing a game of Monopoly starts off with $1,500. Well, can you imagine starting that game with no money? You're gonna be out of that game mm -hmm. as soon as it starts. Well, that's the experience that black people have had historically and presently in this country. So again, now what? Dondre, let's turn now to another celebration that's happening this weekend, and that's Father's Day. You're a father, and you've been vocal about your own childhood growing up without a father figure. How did those experiences inspire you to write your latest book? 
Yeah, you know, we become, we only become great at things that we receive information, instruction, and accountability in order to get good or great at it. So if we don't receive the information and instruction, we can't become great. And if we don't receive accountability, there's no way for us to be great once we apply the information and instruction. That's everything that we do in life. Well, somehow we think, and I, and I always draw this example to the brothers that I, I speak to across this nation. And the reason why I wrote Male Versus Man was because I didn't receive manhood messaging from my father. So it was difficult for me to properly matriculate into manhood, despite all the things that my mother taught me. My mother taught me how to become a great citizen. She taught me how to be thoughtful. She mm -hmm. taught me how to be considerate. She taught me how to be responsible, but she couldn't teach me how to be something that she was not. That's, that, that's no strike against my mother. She just isn't a man. So she couldn't teach me how to be something that she was not. So the messaging that I didn't receive put me in a game where I didn't have the information and instruction in order for me to flourish in order for me to be a great father, in order for me to be a great husband, in order for me to be a great man in our community. And I said, I am not going to have that be the story if any other brother who doesn't get that from their father, they can now get that book from the messaging that I give them in male versus man. So this is why many of our brothers go without. Look, I've talked to a bunch of gangsters from I'm, I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York. So from the East Coast to the West Coast and everywhere in between, and I've spoken to uh, a, quite a few gangsters, and they all said how much they love their mother, how much they would do for their mother. But what they didn't say was, I love my mother enough not to gangbang. When your father is mm. in your life, I got a 12-year-old son. If I found out that my son was on the street gangbanging and putting other people's lives at risk, I love my son to death. But if it came to that, I would love my son to death. There's no way that my son is gonna be out on the street taking the lives of others, in particular our people, and not have me do something about it. This is why our men serve such a great role in the role of, uh, of building great men. We don't have enough men turning males into men. Now, in your book, Dondre, you talk about the difference between a male and a man. Now, I've got my thoughts, but you're, you're the scholar in this area, so please expound. Males look to be served while men look to be of service. Let's pause for a quick second. Let's let that settle in. Say that again, please. Males, <laughs> males look to be served while men look to be of service. This is one of the reasons why this book isn't just for our brothers. It's for our sisters too. Why? Because if you're looking to become partnered with a man, I made a post the other day, no matter what, even if you're not looking to become romantically partnered with a man, you still are going to need a man in your circumference. Let's say you happen to be a sister and you happen to be partnered with a woman and you're raising a boy. Well, you need to become partnered with a man also, because even if you are a woman leading from your divine masculine, there are still things that you will not be able to give your son in order for him to become the man that he was intended to become when he was created. So you are going to need a man for one of two things, partnership or perspective. Our brothers are hmm. desperately needed in our community and in our nation. So if you happen to be one of those sisters and you're raising a son with another woman, so you've got two moms in the home, you still need a man in order to provide your son the proper perspective that he needs in order to be able to walk out what he's gonna have to walk out every single day in this nation. And even if you lead from your divine masculine, you will still not be able to speak to the issues that a man is gonna be able to speak to to that son and to breathe life into him as he walks. This is gonna change his trajectory in this country. So that's why we are so necessary. So no matter what, you are gonna need a man for either one of those two things, partnership or perspective. That's why our brothers are so necessary in this walk. You know, when we talk about fatherhood, um, the, the phrase that comes to my mind is that anyone can be a father, but it takes a special person to be a dad. Um, how has being a dad changed your life, Dondre? 
I have had so many dads in my life. From my my bonus father, who was my my stepfather, that my my uh, my mother, he was the the first example of what a man was to me at a very early age because he took a a woman in my mother, but then he had to take a child in that wasn't his biological. So he was my first example of what a man is. See, men. Mm -hmm. Our job every single day, our purpose in this life is to be of service. And our first service is to serve the women and children in our lives. Now notice I said women, which is plural. Now I have one woman, which is my wife, but she's not my, my only assignment. Yo D, you are my sister, you are my assignment too. So every sister in my circumference is my assignment as a man. That's why God put me here on this earth to serve the women and children in my life and then to be a loving but firm accountability partner to my brothers. I had a brother who I've known since our days in Brooklyn when we were living the lives of males trying to find our way in the manor. He has become, since then, an accomplished uh, businessman. He came to me one day and he said, Dondre, he said, I'm gonna tell you something, bro. He said, we need you, man. He said, because your voice, he said, I don't know if you know this or not, but when you walk in the room, the room changes because the brothers in that room know that accountability had just walked into the room. And that landed on me like a ton of bricks. I didn't realize that mm -hmm. that was the effect. That was my intention, but I didn't know if that was my impact. So every single day I'm asking myself as a man, is my intention my impact? Am I having the kind of imp in, in impact that I know that my intention is calling for. So those yeah. uh, things are extremely important for my life every single day. So when you call on me, when you sent me that text message and you let, you said, Dondre. And the first thing I said was, <laughs> what I do, right? As a joke, like what I do. <laughs> and you said, I, I, all I read was, I need you. I didn't see anything else in your text message. All I saw was those three words, I need you. And that was it. I said, I'm there. I saw Friday after that. You did. But you as did. soon as I saw I need you, I said, I'm there. Because that's my assignment. You are my assignment. Dondre, thank you so very much. This, this is actor, activist, author, and super dad, super friend, super brother, Dondre Whitfield.